Over 30 years ago, a pair of hikers in the Utztal Alps stumbled upon what they thought was the body of a lost mountaineer. The year was 1991. The location was a melting glacier straddling the border between Austria and Italy. This was no ordinary hiker. This was a man who had died more than 5,000 years ago. His body, tools, and clothing preserved by the ice. He quickly became known as Utzi, the Iceman, one of the most important archaeological finds of the modern age. For decades, scientists examined every part of him, his shoes stuffed with hay for warmth, his finely stitched goat hide coat, his last meal of ibex meat and inkhorn wheat, even the arrow lodged in his back. His body revealed parasites, arthritis, frostbite, and the earliest known case of Lyme disease. It seemed the picture was complete. Otzi was a Copper Age farmer hunter, typical of the people who once roamed the Alps. And yet, as ancient DNA technology advanced, a new picture began to emerge, one that suggested he wasn't typical at all. The real question wasn't simply how he died, but who he was, and why his ancestry set him apart from those around him. In recent years, researchers at the Institute for Mummy Studies in Bolzano, Italy, and geneticists across Europe have sequenced his entire genome, comparing it to dozens of other ancient remains. What they found overturned decades of assumptions. Utzi's paternal lineage, inherited from his father's side, was an unusual branch of haplogroup G2A. It was rarely seen in the Alps during his lifetime. The men buried in neighboring valleys mostly shared a different Y chromosome lineage, suggesting they were part of a tightly knit patrilineal community where land, livestock, and status passed from father to son. Yotzi's genetic thread did not fit into that pattern. Even more striking was his maternal lineage. The mitochondrial DNA passed from mother to child was a rare variant, designated K1F. To this day, it has never been found in any other human remains, ancient or modern. It may have disappeared entirely, making Utsi a genetic ghost. His very existence hints that he was part of a fading people, one whose bloodlines vanished from history. This finding transforms Utsi from a representative of his time into something else entirely, a survivor of a group already on the edge of extinction. But DNA did more than illuminate his ancestry. It gave us a portrait of the man himself. He likely stood about 5 feet 3 inches tall and weighed around 110 pounds. His eyes were brown, his skin darker than once imagined, and his hair, though thinning, was likely dark brown to black. He carried genetic risk factors for heart disease and suffered from lactose intolerance, meaning dairy would have been difficult or impossible for him to digest. Far from a robust mountain hunter, he was a man who lived with constant pain from arthritis and parasites, navigating one of the harshest landscapes in Europe with a body already worn down. And then there was his death. Otzi's body tells the story of a tragic end. His body showed a serious wound to the hand, marks suggesting a struggle, an injury from an arrow striking his shoulder, and clear signs of damage to the head. Was he ambushed by rivals, betrayed by kin, or caught in the chaos of a territorial fight? The evidence suggests more than an accident. He was likely attacked, fled into the mountains, and died alone on the ice. But the motive remains one of archaeology's enduring mysteries. Some scholars argue he was killed in a personal conflict, perhaps over land or resources. Others speculate ritual violence, a symbolic killing at a time when communities guarded their bloodlines and territories fiercely. What remains certain is that his death was no ordinary passing. It was abrupt, violent, and unresolved. Yet even in death, Atsi's belongings speak volumes. The copper axe found beside him remains one of the most extraordinary artifacts of the Copper Age. Its blade was forged from ore mined in what is now central Italy, hundreds of miles to the south. He also carried flint tools traced to northern regions and obsidian that likely originated on Mediterranean islands. Tiny amber beads point toward connections reaching all the way to the Baltic. Far from being an isolated mountaineer, Utzi stood at the crossroads of continent-spanning trade networks. 
his life tied the high alpine valleys into the vast exchanges of prehistoric Europe. Still, what makes him most haunting is not the reach of his possessions, but the disappearance of his lineage. Genetic studies show that after Utzi's time, the people of the Alps changed dramatically. Beginning around 2400 BC, new groups swept in from the Pontic Caspian steppe. They brought horses, wagons, bronze tools, and a completely different genetic signature. Within a few centuries, the once dominant Anatolian farmer ancestry that defined people like Utzi was diluted, reshaped, and in many cases erased. His rare Y DNA lineage dwindled. His unique maternal line vanished altogether. By the Bronze Age, the genetic world of Utzi's people no longer existed. He was preserved in the ice, but his culture, his kin, and his ancestry disappeared from the living record. So, who was he really? A farmer, a hunter, a trader? Yes. But also an outsider. His DNA reveals he did not belong fully to the communities around him. His health shows a man already worn down by disease and injury. His death shows violence, perhaps rejection. He may have been an exile, a wanderer, or a last survivor of a dwindling group. And that changes how we see him. He is not just the best preserved mummy of the Copper Age. He is the last voice of a people who left no other trace. Today, every new study brings more detail. Microscopic analysis of his clothing shows expert craftsmanship. Stable isotope testing maps, where he grew up and where he traveled. DNA sequencing connects him to 92% Anatolian farmer ancestry, with small traces of hunter-gatherer and steppe heritage. Each new discovery sharpens the picture, but it also deepens the mystery. Because while we can know what he ate, what he carried, and how he died, the one question remains unanswered. Why him? Why was this man preserved in the ice while his people vanished into history? Was his lonely body on the glacier the end of a line stretching back thousands of years? The more we learn about Utsi, the more he refuses to fit neatly into the categories we expect. He is both ordinary and extraordinary, a man of his time and a man apart from it. His frozen body is not just a time capsule. It is a reminder of how fragile human existence can be. How entire bloodlines can vanish while one life remains to tell the story. And that is why Otsi, the Iceman, continues to haunt us. Not just because he was preserved in ice, but because he was preserved alone. His body whispers across millennia, carrying the memory of a people who no longer exist. Leaving us with questions that may never be fully answered. Ancient DNA has revealed his real origin. But it has also shown us something far more profound, that sometimes, in the silence of the mountains, what survives is not the story of everyone, but the story of one.